Yeah. Tony, what's happening, my man? How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time, man. Um, welcome to the show. Um, it's a bit of a mission for me to, to, <laughs> to get this podcast going. But yeah, thanks for making the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tony, how things been and how are you doing, bro? Yeah, bro, it's always cool, cool to see you. Like I was said when we first tried, that I always feel like your energy is gone, so it lifts my spirits. And so I felt like I wanted to come out. That's why I reached out to come onto the show. I think it's, it's cool what you're doing. I've seen who you've got on. And um, yeah, I wanted to be a part of it, man. So I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm doing all right. I'm a bit tired after today's training session in camp uh, with the Proteus guys. So that's, that's been a bit tiring, but, um, but it's been good, man. No, man, thank you so much for making the time. Uh, I think you were with the SAA side in Sri Lanka. How was that, how was that experience for you? Yeah, I think personally it was, a, it was a tough tour. I didn't do as well as obviously I'd like to have done. Um, having captain the side, though, it was cool to, to see those guys... <laughs> to see those guys <laughs> to see those guys doing well um, don't worry we have random people coming well, through because nah, uh, no, we obviously it's the environment yeah yeah, so, <laughs> yeah okay um, to see those guys uh, to, to do well against those guys Sri Lanka in particular um, when you go there I feel like you always learn like little little bits um because, uh, like I said earlier, they like street cricketers, man. So they they always change and always doing like small little things to try and get an edge. Um, and it's not like malicious; it's just clever. And you and you actually pick up on those kind of things. You can use it in your own game. So I always enjoy going to Sri Lanka. Um, and then you were the captain there. Yeah, I was captain for both formats or just the one. For for both the formats, it was just a fifty over and, and four day stuff. No twenty twenties. So yeah, I was captain on that tour um, with with Shukri as the head coach. Yeah, and how did you guys do in terms of results? We. We we won the one day series, two uh, one. Um, the last game, a couple of good performances in there. Stubbsy was, uh, in particular, was good. Mutu Mutu Sammy was brilliant the whole tour. Actually, yeah. I mean, he was probably the the backbone of our bowling attack. Yeah. So listen, wait. I want to find out about that. Actually, interesting. The spinners like got Mutu got like all the wickets. Talk to me about that. How are the conditions think, in terms of that? And I stuff? think obviously the the message with Shooks was obviously he wanted bowlers to learn to bowl in those types of conditions because obviously it's not Seema friendly. So there's a lot for them to gain. Uh, but obviously you do need a spinner in Sri Lanka, so Sen was the guy, and yeah, he was the guy. He was he bowled particularly well. I mean, I remember the uh, the one umpire. I can't remember his name now, but he he does a lot of internationals and he, uh, international games. And he was saying uh, Sen is probably one of the better spinners he's had for, as from an overseas perspective yes. in terms of using the conditions. He bowls yeah. quite similar to the Sri Lankan guys. He's quite good at u- varying his pace. So no, he was brilliant. I mean, if we didn't have him. That would probably mean I was going to have to bowl, and that was going <laughs> to. Then we're in trouble. So. Yeah, they're in trouble. And then, and then, listen. Talk to me about um, guys having to adapt to the conditions. How was that? Do you feel like you guys adapted fine, or was it difficult for you to adapt? I think it would have been nicer to have the the pre-season or the pre-camp in Sri Lanka because it is a, there is different conditions. So, you know, uh, a lot of the time um, you're trying to adapt in the game, um, which is obviously a skill that you want to have because conditions do change in games. You might. Um, if you're going on like a full Proteus tour, you might be playing 50 over and then one day and the conditions do change. But it would have been nice, I think, to maybe have that camp in Sri Lanka for a bit, just to, like I said, you, you get, get used to those conditions, um, get used to the heat, the humidity, those types of things. Yeah. And it's, it's tough cricket there. It's hot, uh, it's sandy, it's dirty, it, like the ground's dirty, you're always coming off the field like your whites are gone. Those. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough time to kind of cricket and getting used to it. Um, so I think I think all the guys, especially for a young group, I think everyone can be quite proud of how they how they adapt to the conditions. No, no, that's good to hear. Um, my next question would be um, the captaincy. You captained SN19, eh? Yes. Um, I don't know. I'm a bit nervous with this uh, podcast because I feel like I could be maybe speaking to the future Proteus <laughs> captain. No, what, what's your take on no, that? I think a lot of guys obviously are trying to project that onto me because I'm yeah. a leader. I think I've done it before in the past, but I think. To be honest, very honest with you, it's not something I have my eye on. Um, it's not something I'm trying to work towards. I think my goal is to try cement my side in the 50 over side um, and the test team in particular. Um, I think there's an opportunity for me to do that. Um, if captaincy comes, I think it comes, but it's not something I'm working towards and it's not a pressure I'm really putting on myself. I think I'm learning from the leaders that are already in that environment, Dean, Temba, Aiden, who are all very different in the way that they you know, lead their own space and how they communicate to other guys um, so I think yeah a, f- a few people always ask that question when now since I've come up I think because of the way Shukri's spoken yeah. about me or whatever so obviously I'm appreciative of that but it's not really 
in my uh, plans going forward anytime soon, to be very honest. Yeah, it obviously would be for you to cement your position yeah, as a batter in the team first and then yeah, obviously look at the captaincy. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, even then, I mean, you, you never know. Things could change. In three years' time, we could have this conversation. I might say, yeah, I want to be in the captain. Yeah, yeah. But where yeah. I am in my, uh, in my development now, it's not, it's not really part of my plans, to be honest. Yeah, interesting. Um, Tony, I think another one is wearing the green and gold. Like, <laughs> how's that, bro? Like, I can only imagine how that must have been for you, you know? Uh, I think they showed something on, like, Instagram or one of the social media platforms where you were receiving your cap and stuff, and it was all emotional. How was, how was that for you? Um, yeah, I think it starts, obviously, when you get the call. You get the call, which is, which is quite cool. Um, I got my call late in the day, but I'd obviously... Um, unfortunately, I think he got dropped, so I, I'd heard, he'd already told me he got dropped, so he asked if if I got the call yet, because I assume everyone was getting their calls in the morning. So at like five in the afternoon, I hadn't gotten my call yet, so I was like, Oof, I didn't make the squad, I'd made yeah. peace with it. I was disappointed and I was like, okay, let's move on. And then my call came in the evening from Shukri, so that was like a surprise again. And then, you know, you get into the camp, obviously you get your kit, um, you get your, your all the Proteus kit and you see the stuff. I remember I still sent a, a selfie to my... Um, to uh, Pele, uh, Javeshin, with the, yes. the, the, the Proteus badge, and I was like, ah, like, you know? Because <laughs> um, it's different, bro. It's, it's a different... I can imagine, yeah. Yeah, and then obviously you, you, you're training, the training's hectic, and then only after... Uh, I didn't know that there was a capital ceremony or anything like that. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Anything. So only in that, when I came back into the change room, the Oaks are like huddling around this table, candles and everything. I'm like, yo, what's going on here, boys? And then, yeah. Yeah, then Kruger said the speech. Obviously, I was emotional. You feel all the... Uh, all the sacrifices you made, all the people that helped you get there, you know, all the moments where you, you know, you wanted to quit, yeah, yeah. give up or stop or change things or, you know, you were angry, like all those emotions just kind of, for me, came bubbling up because it, it wasn't a straight line journey. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah. in that particular moment when he was speaking and he said a few things, obviously he's mentioned my mom and stuff like that. So then, yeah, I was a little bit overwhelmed. But yeah. I also was like whatever dude i'm gonna feel these emotions because yeah it's cool i'm not gonna get this capping ceremony every year <laughs> yeah you're day. right you're right you so only I get it well once. Yeah. be real and then be myself and be authentic yeah. no that's pretty dope eh? but that's where you are now yeah. i wanted to like go all the way back you know when did you fall in love with cricket first and you know that sort of stuff i'll be honest bro i always tell people like i my first love was football i was really good at football when i was young um I played cricket when I was young as well. You, play, you just play all the sports, you know, when you're young and you, you have decent ball skills. So you play everything. Um, and I think I made my decision to go into cricket quite seriously much later in, in high school. Um, but I played most sports going, going through, the, through primary school. And um, I think cricket was one that I enjoyed from an individual aspect because obviously it is a team sport. Yeah. But it, there's an individual thingy to, uh, element to it completely so i mean you can check how you've done how yes, hard you've yes, trained yes. and how hard you've worked and that was from young okay cool that related to your runs or your wickets or your catches or whatever yeah. so i enjoyed that direct correlation of and that's that's something i still have to get over because nowadays if there isn't a direct correlation with at um if how the amount of work you put in is going to give you the amount of runs. Yes, that's you true. You a thousand balls and you can get and a first ball. You get a first ball, that's true. get a bad decision from the yeah, umpire. And yeah. getting around those kind of things because that's, that's how, when I was growing up, that's what I loved about the game. Yeah. That's what made me fall in love with it. Because when you're younger, you, you just, if you were just going to be better than everyone because yes. people develop at different ages. So if you were hitting more balls and you were like 14, you were going to just be much better yes. than other people and yes. you were just going to get more runs. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, you, everyone develops later, then you think, and you, you sort, kind of equalize and that's where you've got to rekindle other loves and that kind of stuff. And uh, what would you say would be the life lessons learned from cricket? Exactly that. That is not always a direct correlation of what you put in is what you get out. It was a big motto for me going through school because, like I said, you could always see the, the output. Um, so I think through cricket kind of understanding that there's a lot of things you can control and there's a lot of things you can't and it's being like the life lesson would be is like super uh, particular about those things because like I said you you want to train hard or do things in a certain way but it doesn't always translate in the field and then how do you how do you uh, make peace with that because it's easy for two weeks to train hard and get 200s or whatever in school or going through cricket and yeah, okay, cool, hard work is the way. But when you do hard work and you don't get your runs or you don't get your satisfaction, whatever, do you continue with that? Are you, is this the kind of man you're going to be? Uh, are you going to react to these, you know, these downturns? Because cricket is, 
Yeah, you know, up and down, up and down. Up and down, up and down. And, and cricket is one of the sports I feel like, geez, when you're on top, it feels like everything's going. You're catching well, you're fielding yeah, yeah, well, yeah. your jokes are funnier, everything's good. <laughs> And then when it's dark, it's like, geez, you no one laughs at your jokes anymore. Yeah. Or you, you know, you just it's it, it's tough. So it's dealing with those kind of things, and it's definitely transferable into life. And then and then when when you do get in those periods where things aren't going that well, what do you normally like do? I like to I use I have a journal, so I like to write a lot of stuff down. Um, I've probably been bad in the last two months in terms of writing things down, and that's and that's and that's part of it is where you like you. When you're doing well, you have these processes, you stick to them or whatever. And then yeah. it's probably when you need to stick to those processes the most is when you're not doing so well. But then you you know, you know fight these things. Oh, well, this, this thing doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I've gone past I've that. I've gone past that. And, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and find those things. So for me, I, I pray a lot. Um, I find it like, helps me in, in terms of... Um, you know, finding some sort of peace because I mean, you, you can, like I said, you can control a lot of things, but there's a lot of things outside of your control and you have to try to deal with that. Um, yeah, I like to journal. I like to try to get away from cricket when I can um, in a positive way. And I like to try to connect with, I have a small group of friends outside of cricket, so I'll try to connect with them a little bit if I can just to, you know, take your mind off it so that when you come back, you're like invigorated and ready to go again. Yeah, that's interesting you say that. I think um, obviously Tony, Proteas player, professional cricketer, do, they, do you feel like those friends of yours ground you? How do you stay grounded in the situation that you may in, you know? My mom will always ground me um, because she doesn't see me as Tony the Proteas. She sees yes. me as Tony her son. So yeah. she's, there's certain things that will never change. Yeah. Obviously, if she, I think if she had to ever see me getting a bit ahead of myself and yeah. in different ways obviously she knows i'm a creative person i'm going to express myself i have tattoos and yeah, i'm going yeah. to do these things but yes. if, she, if it ever came at the at the cause of core values and principles then i think she would definitely be the first one to be like hey, hey calm down brother <laughs> do you know it's interesting you bring up your your mother because um a lot of parents may feel like you know maybe we're getting too too much into the guy's space and that sort of stuff how did how does that work for you what do you what are your thoughts on that Look, I think being a parent must be ridiculously tough. Um, I was lucky in the sense that my mom didn't have... She was sporty, but um, my dad was also sporty, but she never had a particular dream for me or pushed anything onto me or projected her inability to live out some of her sporting dreams. She was a swimmer. She never projected that stuff onto me. So she always her thing was always like, are you enjoying it? Are you still happy doing this? And like, there was no... Um, how can I say it? hecticness or whatever or pressure from it it yeah. was always like enjoyment and happiness like is this still adding value to your life and whatever I wanted to do she would support so if I wanted to when I was playing rugby at school like and I had to go for those early morning trainings at 5 or whatever on the weekend she'd take me and cricket was here football. so she would always try her best to give me the opportunity to succeed but ultimately the drive and stuff had to come from me it was never it was never going to Pushed by her. Pushed by her. So that's yeah, why yeah, I, yeah. I feel like I get a lot. I'm um, different to some people. Is that it was yes. always my own thing. So any, this, the only reason I'm here is because I want to be here. There's no other. There was yeah. no other person that's like this is like my pushing son, you. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Maybe that's a bit different, and I'm always grateful that that's how it, it went with us. Um, but I think yeah, sometimes I think with parents, it, you see the guys whose parents are projecting their dreams onto them. You can you can see it because ultimately what happens is I feel like the guys rebel. There's, yeah, there's, a, yeah. there's a fine line obviously yeah. if a kid is talented but lazy as a parent you want you can see the the talent so you're like geez boy push yourself because there's something here yeah but there's always a fine line i think it's always gonna have to come from the kid because you see it all the time the guys yeah you see the school that yeah. will wait better than me at like rugby cricket or whatever but their parents was and then they just say you know what i'm done with this like almost as like a rebellion towards them yeah so i think there's a fine line and i think if when you get it right more often than not it's it's amazing yeah yeah going back to high school uh what high school were you at again i was at kids king Cares. of the seventh yeah <laughs> king of the seventh listen good king of the Sporting seventh academy sure man. With, listen with you, academics on the no side. in actual fact wait a minute you guys were a cricket like factory who was jimmy no, cook jimmy, and everyone was there eh? everyone jimmy cook was, was working there. there and you guys at private i don't think there's ever like a year where there's not a cares boy in the 19th yes, side yes, yes. that's playing that's coming to franchise cricket there's always every year someone coming through and they always gun um, no, even though Saints Stadium just taken over, but no yeah, comments. But I'm not going to speak on Saints because that's a that's a different philosophy. We build the cricketers, they buy the cricketers. Oh, okay. so let's not get into that. Let's, let's not get into that. No, I mean Saints. Our rivalry at Saints in my year was serious cricket. You were playing against 
arguably the, like all the guys of franchise cricketers you had you had uh, Saints you had like Mulder you had McQuetu you had Vasconcellos um, you had obviously Rickleton yes. Wilson was there then you saw the light and came to Cares yeah. <laughs> so it was always shoot, I mean KG's from Saints it's always like that at Cares we obviously had really good cricketers and it, I think some of my best cricketing memories are honestly at, with the guys I played with that I'm still kind of friends with yeah, yeah. who don't play cricket anymore but yes, yes. if we see each other we can remember Re- certain games yeah, catches yeah, guys yeah, who got runs yeah. and those memories are like you I remember some of those more than like franchise games because it's just school memories you right? know that I always tell guys that are in high school when I coach is that this could be the highlights of your cricket career yeah. you know because we all have this dream of playing professional after school but you yes. actually do you know that playing first the team are, yes the chances are very minimal but the chances I mean the opportunities to play and do do really well um, in a high school could be the memories that you create for a lifetime 100%. with your brothers that you mm. know so talk to me about that old boys school Where, did you always want to go there from primary school old boys school your experiences there uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I was I was a boarder from grade eight. I was tough, some serious initiation and that, um, which I actually enjoyed looking back. I think it's it's you know like it's. I was saying to I was speaking to Sen about it where there's like these little moments when you're doing these initiations and all this stuff, like where you decide like what kind of person you're going to be. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's easy to like say oh I'm hard and I'm or oh, I'm like this or oh, I'm like that. But then you know when you're doing these kind of things in an all boys school where you have to go through you know the rules and seeing the, all these kind of things that push you in a certain way you, you kind of have to face with like okay what kind of guy am I going to be am I going to be the rebellion am I going to be so I really enjoyed that at, at Kez um, I enjoyed all the memories I was naughty at school I mean if the teachers had to if you had to go do the same podcast with teachers <laughs> yeah they would be like yo this guy was a troublemaker like, no, we didn't see him becoming no, wait, successful wait. because yo this kid was <laughs> <laughs> listen listen I imagine you being that guy who plays first team rugby and like you know I'm that guy <laughs> yeah I'm that guy I'm that guy nah, look yeah uh, listen were you that guy were you that guy a little bit I'm not gonna lie listen, I'm a little bit and Daddy, I, don't lie dude you were that guy I was a guy I was a guy a little bit um, you played was, first team. You played first team. Yeah, yeah. I played first team rugby, but I, I was I was still approachable. I reckon, like I wasn't I wasn't the, the bully man. Like the I didn't I didn't I left that to the naughty other naughty guys. But yeah, yeah, you you have your you have a different blazer when you yeah, get full yeah, colors. Yeah, and, you know, yeah, there's hype yeah. there. People who play first team rugby, people coming to watch you guys. I was a ten and twelve. Yeah, so it was like sick. You at the pinnacle. <laughs> That's like the pinnacle. You can't do better at an all boys school. That's like true. First team That's rugby true. and thingy. So That's true. It was, but then you realize outside of school no one actually cares no one actually cares <laughs> Dude, that, that's, that's like, why I'm saying you, when you I always advise school guys that this could be the pinnacle yeah and where, enjoy that moment and enjoy right? that moment There's because wrong. you're not going to get every weekend where you've got 5,000 people coming, coming to, to watch, watch you, you. classic you, cash there's yeah. still games now that Oak show us on YouTube and we played Jeppy I think we drew Rashad Fuller hit the post on the last kick of the game yeah that was like thousands of people there watching us singing swearing at you what are, like those are special, like, I still get goosebumps about Dude. Like, and then the thing is, like, some people know that, that, like you said, that was the pinnacle. Like, that was it from there. And that's unfortunate, but it is how it is. Yeah, yeah. Let's just wait for this guy to walk past. Yeah, I appreciate him. <laughs> no, don't stress. No, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, we'll get random guys pulling through. Um, yeah, so, but other than that, Tony, then you tell us about... Um, you know, playing first team cricket and then making your provincial team and then to SA and 19. How was that for you? Yeah, you obviously you do Cubs week, Cokes weeks, all those things you do. You have to do quite well, then you get selected. Um, it's like a lot of pressure on guys. Um, I think I was lucky. Uh, Laurie, uh, uh, Lawrence chose me to be captain of that side, and we had a really good side. I think Vili really could have easily been captain. Um, he's an American now, but he was a gun captain at school, like ahead of his time. And we had a really good side um, at under 19. We had a tough tour to Bangladesh, a couple of tough tours. We lost, we lost some casualties on that tour. Um, guys don't play cricket anymore, but it was those, those kind of tours put hair on your chest. You know, that's, yeah. you, you could see yeah. there was a level. I mean, there was a guy, he's playing test cricket now, actually, um, for, for Bangladesh, Shantu. Uh, better left hand, but he was like honestly, I like, was like very curly when we were, yeah, I yeah, so, he was close, like, yeah, he had, yeah. The, he had like the swagger yes, about him, and yes. he just hit the ball harder. And like, you could, I could just see there was a there was yeah. a there was a level. And even though it's under 19, I was like, oh, okay, we, we're gonna have to work harder to get to this level because we, we're not actually there yet. A few of us, I mean, Verena, like I said earlier, said similar stuff where there was a tour where we got smashed and we got abused, and it was the first time you know, I, I got exposed to that kind of like social media abuse and like people with fake accounts swearing you all these kind of yes, yes so it was, yes. a, it was a lot of things happening on that tour and you like had to decide okay is this something I want to continue doing, doing I'm going to yeah. put put myself through this um, like um, do I love the game that much or the challenge that much uh, 
do I want to come back and try and get better and you know silence yeah, people? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the tours were tough at under nineteen, but there were there were a lot of learning took place. You know? No, interesting you bring that up because um, when I sit here, I'm thinking to myself, like, do people like send you messages and stuff, like, and abuse you and yeah, I've social media and stuff? Eh? As hectic. Some of this funny, eh? like, like sometimes you just got to read. I mean, the, I do you read? Lang- do you read this stuff? Well, I mean, if the comments on a post, like, it's not even a direct message, and I can <laughs> yeah. just like delete it without reading. But every comment, and he's, what did he say though? I mean, it was bad. I didn't get a first ball duck. So he says, "What is the is the ball invisible? Invisible while you're batting." <laughs> so now you can't you can't not laugh at that. Bro. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear and obviously, you, you angry laugh this guy, whatever, whatever. But I mean, yeah, some of it gets a bit dark, and no one wants to see that. I mean, yeah. I remember Lugi speaking to me about some of his experiences. Um, but you know what? I think it's it's part of the. The space we're in, we're ultimately doing our job in front of other people. Yeah. So people feel like they have access to you and can, and in a different way now, and they can have an opinion. Yeah. I mean, we don't get to comment on accountants and tax yeah, guys, whatever's doing that's their true. job. But that's true. I suppose it is what it is. There's pros and cons. Yeah, you know, I think when you're in the inside, people forget that you're human first. Mm. They just see you as a sports star. They yeah, must this entity pro- they can. Yeah, have. they mm. can just go out there and just perform, which is pretty interesting. Mm. Just to understand your journey, you then it's in a 19. What happens after that? Went to Tux. Uh, I did, like I said, it was very bad. It's a 19 tour, so we went to uh, the Lions. weren't too interested in me at the yeah, time, so yeah. they were like. UJ and Tux was my thingy. Marty's were, and then like a, they pulled away, so it was Tux and thingy. I had uh, interviews, and I just enjoyed the vibe at Tux. I'd seen, I'd had my Kruger, who was the guy who gave me, uh, the coach who gave me my cap at the Proteus. He was there at the time, spoke to him, just got a good vibe from the place. I could see a lot of young guys that had done well at Tux and now played for the Titans or gone to other franchises like Classy, uh, Aiden, um, uh, Jones. All these guys were coming through, so it was like, okay, oh, I think that's the place I want to be. I want to be in a good team set up yes. because that's probably yes. the quickest way to get better is yeah. in a good team um, so yeah I decided to go there it went relatively well Charlton gave me my chance at, at yeah. Northerns having done well at, at Tux um, and then I was in a really good side at, at Northerns uh, Vandia Carber Moon Sammy um, Grant Thompson like a lot of se- uh, senior guys experienced yeah. guys so you learn quickly you know that like little nuances of the game that you just weren't aware of and and I learned I learned a lot in that time in that in that period, and then went to then Albi asked me to come train for Titans 50 over compost, I think my debut, and then well, I think I was a, <laughs> I was like a filler, bro. Right? Go on the team sheet at three, but then if there was like a small partnership, you just slide. Yeah, slide all the way down. Finishing games at seven. Now I'm a finisher. It was it, it was part of the growth, though, bro. It's it just what just to get that opportunity. Yeah, it's you there, and you just get that opportunity. We won a, a Ram Slam there. Like Mooney and I remember our debut game was at Supersport Park, and we, there was like a bit of a crowd. It was a weekend game, and we're like, "Yo, this is sick." This like is people proper. catching. Like yeah, you get a four, and then you yeah. hear the clap. So it was it was cool. And then I did well at Titans. I enjoyed my time there. I uh, learned a lot. Um, you know, it was a serious group of senior players there so you either sink or swim yeah and um, yeah luckily enough I did alright and then I decided to go to Cape um, yeah it's interesting I think that period when you first came into the northern setup um, was obviously helping out there with the strength and conditioning but I saw a very like confident sure of himself guy characteristic was what kind of character would you say you are we're not going to say anything about the, the, the hair and all of that, but hey, Character. we'll get to that and the tattoos and whatever. But like, yeah, just, just tell us a bit more about that. Uh, I think with the, 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 the kid you saw, maybe, it was, I'm still a kid, um, you know, it's always a fight. So that's why it, I'd rather be, you know, sure of myself and back myself because how many people are going to back me? So I'd rather, that was always my mindset, still is. Um, and that's probably why sometimes you can come off as, uh, I don't know, abrasive or arrogant or whatever it is. Um, but I think I've gotten a, lot, a little bit better at opening up and trying to let people in and show other sides of, of myself. Because I think sometimes I can be a bit misunderstood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's just one of those things. I think I'll, we're all just trying to learn how to be our best selves. And I think as a, as a character, I think that's one thing a few people, we had like a... Uh, did like a team building thing and then a few people that was one of the encouragements for me was that that they enjoy the fact that I'm always myself and I encourage others to do the same yeah I think that's very important I think in a team setup and that's what I said I noticed was that you got into a team and you were able to be yourself some people take time to get into you know into their character and be themselves around amongst other guys so you walk into a change room and there's a Henry David's in there yeah 
there's all these big guys, big players, Albi Morkel, um, and you seem to just be able to, you know, find your feet pretty quickly. Um, any advice for anyone who would, you know, I, I see a lot of youngsters. The reason why I'm asking for advice is because yeah. I see a lot of youngsters come into our change room, for example, and it takes time, but we encourage them to be themselves. Yes. But you can see that, you know, the approach to the team environment is different. It, you know, I think sometimes in team environments, being yourself, like they, everyone says be yourself or whatever, but I think it's ultimately led by the, the senior guys. Um, you know, how they respond to, to you when you are essentially being yourself. Um, is there in culture uh, is there one that allow it's trying to catch you out in terms of catch you doing bad things that don't fit the thing or is their culture trying to catch you doing good so are they trying to because I, I feel like that's probably the best way to get guys to be themselves is like when you are like you're a bubbly guy and when you when you're being yourself I feel like it's an infectious uh, feeling you're a bubbly guy or whatever but yeah. the, a good team environment then can latch onto that and, and kind of catch you doing that and encourage you to do it more. Does that make sense? Yes. Instead of stifling that. Yes. yes. Does that make sense? So it makes I think sense, yeah. with young guys is obviously you can, young guys, yeah, they're young, but they still can pick up what the vibe of a group is. And they ultimately their goal is to fit in. That's true. So a lot of the time their, their mindset or thoughts or whatever is not about being themselves. It's about, okay, well, what, what is what? It acceptable? What do these guys like? Or do they prefer these types of activities or when they, everyone's talking about these types of things okay then that's the kind of person I've got to kind of mold myself yeah, into, into so yeah. that I can be accepted yeah. by the group and that's that's everywhere I mean that's in work that's in teams yeah. Um, and yeah obviously there's going to be guys that are a bit rebellious like myself or other people but ultimately you're going to you don't want to have any doubts bro. like you don't want to change yourself. And yeah, change think, because yes, yes, yes. What, what am I doing? It's it, it's always interesting that because that's something I really believe in. I believe that I think people that are coming in don't understand that you actually become the culture. Why I say you become the culture because you part of the culture. Yeah. So you enter the team space. Let's say maybe the 16th player and the 16 players. As soon as you enter that team, you are the culture. You can add to the culture, mm. and obviously still try obviously fit in, but you being that extra piece can be the difference in yeah. the team environment. So come with who you are, yes. and then that can only add to our environment. Yes, yes, there's one, two, few things we would like to change, Yes, but just be you, because that could be the piece that, that's you know, missing or, that's missing yeah, or adds, adds more value or, you know, that sort of stuff. So that's always something that I've seen and noticed with a lot of guys. So, yeah, how's, how's it been for you in the, in the South African setup in terms of that? I've enjoyed myself, but I think the, every environment is different. I mean, the province environment is going to be completely different to the Titans environment. Um, good and bad, pros and cons on both sides. Yeah. So I think it's about ultimately, like you said, you want to be yourself, but ultimately you've got to try to find what, what works for you. Um, even in an environment that's maybe tougher or maybe not conducive to what you usually enjoy, you've got to try and then find what's going to work for you in that. There's no point re rebelling against the whole team or rebelling against the whole environment. Yeah, it's not yeah. sustainable. You can't yeah, do that. You can't do that. You need your team. You because need even you. if you're a gun player, you can't you can't make runs if there's no one batting with you. Yeah, it's and true. You can't take wickets if no one's taking your catches. So as much as there's, there's the individual element and yes, you need to be yourself, they, you have to adapt to certain cultures. That's true. You have to adapt to certain rules. If if this is a team that hates being late, bro, you, then you can't be late. Yeah, that's it. That's not about personality trait. Being, yeah. do you understand what I mean? There's yeah. certain things you're gonna have to adapt to and change to whatever, and you have got to find what works for you within that, bro. That's what I think. Yeah, interesting. So now you make the move from Titans to Western Province. Um, how was that for you? Yeah, so I'd obviously been away from home f before. I'd gone to boarding school. I lived in Pretoria by my uh, in a sports house or mad house there with Lungi and Javesha. Yeah, yeah. Those stories we can't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then, uh, yeah, going to Cape Town was nice. I moved at that time with Manak. Manak was moving from Easton's and he was also with the Titans yes, at the yes, time. Yes, yes, And then he moved to Cape Town as well. So it was cool that we were kind of both going at the same time. Someone I knew um, that was also new. And then, yeah, I enjoyed it. Obviously, Cape Town's a sick place to live. Um, it was a nice team, welcoming team, uh, young side. You know, I connected a lot with uh, Hamza, uh, Mareki, Perez, Carl. Um, and they kind of welcomed me into the team. Avi. Uh, it was. I think it was a good move at the time for me. It was something I needed, uh, something different outside my comfort zone. Um, I spoke to Ash. I really wanted to work with him at the time. Obviously, I could see a lot of young batters coming through at Province. 
um, and I wanted to kind of be a part of that. Um, I obviously had been to Cape Town a few times on holiday. I thought it was not the worst place to go live. <laughs> You're definitely. <laughs> so I was like, hey, let, hey, here's an opportunity. Let me go see what's happening there. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad I did at that time. Um, a really nice young team. I really felt welcomed. I could be myself quite easily. Um, and there was just a different different groups of characters. Yeah. And I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed that a lot. And then the difference between um, province and uh, Titans, in terms of like environments and stuff, did you feel, you know, I wouldn't say one is better than the other, but like, you know, there's people say certain things about certain places. Yeah, I think Pretoria, Titans, was obviously it's going to be a lot more intense, but there's, there's no beach, so I was yeah. quite relaxed and it was <laughs> intense there. Hardcore, uh, hardcore, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. But I think there's, there's value in that, because yeah. I, mean, I remember when, I'll never forget, I was uh, at the Titans and I was batting well in the one one day comp. I smashed it, I was like, I think I went 150 or something. And the next net, I think I was, the next day we had training or whatever, and I was messing around, like switch hitting and... And Dean said, I don't care if you're scoring runs, you make sure you train properly or whatever. Every day is a chance to get... I was like, obviously initially I'm like, geez, why is this like having a go at me? Yeah, yeah, well. yeah, like, yeah. You know, he's actually 100% right. Like, That's true. He's on to me. He wants, as much as he's having a go at me, he wants best for the team. Because yes, if I do true. well, then the team the, does then well. The team but he also does well. ultimately wants me to do well. So, yeah, there's, there's pros and cons in each environment. I mean, I don't think... Um, Betters is literally going to come swear at me and say, "Hey, or yeah. it's not in his nature." It's in his so nature. There's, yeah. there's, there's pros and cons. Um, I think the, I think the, the the, pro, the thing I liked the most about uh, Province was just a different way of of seeing the game, different way of carrying yourself on and off the field in training. Um, you know, uh, and a, and a real encouragement to to see the game in your own way. I enjoyed that a little bit. Um, we just need to try to figure how we can get that all together so we can start winning trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think one of the main things that when we look at your guys' team, so the Western Province team, is that there's a lot of players that have been produced to go to the pro tiers. You know, as a coach, you, make, you ask yourself two questions. One, am I winning trophies? Or two, am I producing pro tiers, interna- yeah, yeah. Pro tiers and international plays? And you guys have done that really, really well. There always seems to be a, a good bunch someone of guys. Through, yeah, yeah. Someone coming through, which is always good for Western Province. Um, and then you guys were on fire, I think, in the T20 at one stage. <laughs> and you're dominating. And then because you don't know how to win, you didn't win. <laughs> yeah, let's not get into that. You know what? The thing is, the thing is, the thing is, we're yeah. producing proteins like okay. you see, And you guys need the trophies. So okay. we, like, we can't have everything. You, you can't, can't have everything. We're producing proteins and winning trophies. It's too much. Oh, it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> so... <laughs> Maybe this year we'll, we'll change the perspective we'll on change, that, but yeah. 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 that's how we see it. You know what is, what's funny, Tony? Every single team in preseason, building up the season, they want to win trophies. It's yeah. always the same thing. That's one thing well, I've learned. Who doesn't want to win trophies, Lee? It's yeah, but <laughs> obviously, when I win trophies, you set up, oh, we're coming fourth this year. No, it's, no, but I'm just saying, sometimes it's just like some people hope, and it just never happens. you say you shouldn't hope? Huh? Are you saying we shouldn't hope? I don't know. Because the way you're looking at me in the eye, you're saying like some people hope. <laughs> you know, I'm like uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. no, no, I'm not gonna say anything, Tony. I'm not gonna say anything. Yeah, Tony. But anyway, um, then you get the call up to the South African side. Um, you play your debuts in West Indies, eh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So how does that feel for you? Walking out to bat. How many runs did you get that day? I think you got a, you hit a four, man, or something like that. What did you do? No, first up, I like edged one, but it went straight down. <laughs> yeah. Go in there. Straight down. <laughs> yeah, sure, but. Pass Gully. <laughs> You're lying. And then, the uh, no, it honestly went straight down. <laughs> okay. And then Mayers was, I think, at Gully. He dove and missed it and went for four. And yeah. I was eight, and I was like, oh, thank goodness. I'm off the mark. Yeah. Off I'm the not mark, get a duck yeah. Because debut. Because that's what you're thinking. Like, yeah. just don't get a duck. Even when you get like a five and you nick off to a good ball, like, oh, okay, you could have, there's something to grow here. But a duck, now your next inning <laughs> could be another duck. I mean, you're thinking, no. Surely not. <laughs> so, but you look calm. You look calm. Yeah, I was calm, man. I felt, uh, you know, it was a very freeing um, experience for me because I, you, you know, obviously there's pressure on you to do well and all those kind of things. Obviously, you want to do well. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's people on Twitter that don't want you to do well. But yeah, that's another yeah. story. Um, I, I was like, geez, I'm here now. Um, whether you want me there or not, I'm here, and I'm gonna enjoy this. My mom is in the yeah. crowd. She came to watch her son. I'm doing. I'm seeing the national anthem. Like, there's no reason for me to be like anxious and scared. 
Yeah. Because you, you worked for this. Yeah, so you now, worked. So now you I'll be angry it. and scared and I'm only going to enjoy it if I do well. Then then there was no point of even trying to get you. Yeah. The whole point was everyone says you want to play for South Africa. No one ever says your dream is, I want to play for South Africa and do what well and be the best. Yeah, player. yeah, yeah. You, once yeah. you get there you, and you see and, oh, okay, I want to be the best better I can be here and I want to be the best better in South Africa. and what, like. But ultimately your goal was, your first one was to get to South Africa. You know, or some people say, I want to win a World Cup. Yeah. I reckon if you had to get six ducks, but your team wins a World Cup, yes, Africa, that's you couldn't it, yeah. care less. That's it, that's it, yeah. So you know what I mean? So I was like, I might as well enjoy this moment. I'm here, I'm playing international cricket. Alzari's just bounced me first ball. Like, this is sick. This is what I, yeah. I've been dreaming of. You, you dreamed of, People yeah. in, are in their houses in, on DSTV on 202 and they're watching me bad for South Africa. Yeah. That's sick. Whereas yeah. a few years ago, I'm watching other guys. So yeah. it's... Yeah, it must have been a very humbling experience also knowing the journey that you've obviously gone through yeah. in order to get there. So yeah, that yeah. must have been like... Even just the moment where you take the KFC kids, like, I was like, bro, I've never done that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they're yeah. like, hold your hand and they're looking at you and you're like... Yeah, they want to be you. Yeah, yeah. And they're looking at you, what do you do? And like, what, what, why do you have long hair? And I'm just like, this is so cool, bro. Like, <laughs> usually you're watching the Oaks of the KFC kids. Yes, and it, yeah, it's yes. just a moment. You, you never see the kids again, unfortunately. Yeah. Unless you do like the activations and stuff. Yes, but just for that true. moment, you're like... Like a little hero for that guy, yeah, just for that moment. For, which is for cool. that moment, yeah, yeah. And then, Tony, in terms of that, how do you feel being a role model to youngsters? Um, you know, follow you. One thing that I've got to say that I've always liked your character because you're out there. I'm also a bubbly person. Um, would you encourage other guys to be like that? What's your take on that? I wouldn't necessarily encourage guys to be more out there, I just encourage guys to be themselves so that. You know, if you if you fail or if something goes wrong, at least the first thing you can do is ask yourself, okay, was I doing what I enjoy doing? Was I doing me? Yeah. If that's yes, then you can go forward. There's nothing worse than like, I don't know, faking it or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and then, not being true. And then it doesn't go right. Because now what do you fall back on? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't, I don't encourage guys to be more themselves. You mean, I mean, like I look at someone like Pony. Pony's being 100% himself on his social medias, all these kind of things. Yeah. He's expressing himself. That's how he finds ways of expressing his creativity, killing his time, whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. So I resonated with that because I thought, okay, yeah, he's actually not worried about being judged, all these kind of things. It's going to happen anyway. Whether you yeah. average this much, whatever. People, I'm sure there's someone who still thinks Viard Curley is not good. Yeah, like, it's true. It's, it's true. just going to happen anyway. It's just going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then away from the game. So any more away from the game and stuff mm. you know I'm super excited to watch your career unfold thank you good luck with that yes. um, but yeah cricket aside now yeah. let's talk <laughs> let's talk, talk other stuff okay. yeah tell me tell me what do you normally do as hobbies and stuff like that I'm playing golf now because I'm like I've, I've played a few times and I'm not too bad at it I'm not the best but I'm, I'm getting better quicker I've got some a couple of coaches Hamza my mate Thorne is also my coach mm. so informal coaches so I'm getting better I enjoy that um because I, I, I think it's nice you can play socially with people and still yes, connect yes, or whatever. Yes. Um, I play paddle a few times with people singing, but it's not my buzz. Um, I enjoy reading a lot. Um, I love autobiographies, kind of anything really. Anything what, what, what pops up? What pops up in your head when you say you read? Uh, what, one of well, the books at that the moment I'm reading Ray Dalio's Principles, so it's like work and, and, and work and life principles, which is interesting. I mean, he owns a hedge fund and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's just something different. I wouldn't necessarily read about finance and that. Um, I think one I read recently was really interesting was expectation effect, like the impact of your brain on your actual body, like this and the real science behind it, like the actual facts and the studies and how it, how it impacts your life, um, your expectation of yourself and expect how you perceive things. And your body literally does that. Like, it's crazy. I thought it was really interesting. Um, and it's quite usable, I thought. Um, so, yeah, I enjoy reading, uh, especially my off time. Um, I enjoy making videos. I enjoy fashion. Yeah. I like art stuff. Yeah. I like connecting with people outside sociably, having a having a beer, smoking a pipe, relaxing. Um, yeah. And then majority of the time, so the whole purpose of me doing this podcast was for people to get to know the people behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Yeah. You know what I mean? We... We see these guys on TV, so on mm. and so forth. Fun facts. Fun facts. Fun facts about okay. Tony that people don't know. All right. Okay, let me think. Okay, fun fact. I'm a gun 30 seconds player. That's proper. If you good, you got to be half decent. Though. I can't carry you, but I'm a gun 30 seconds player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I actually enjoy, uh, like, collecting boards on Pinterest, like interior design and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Funny enough, I don't like my house is my apartment is decent. Like I filled it up, but I'm, 
I don't know where I'm going to be designing all these things, but I have a board just for <laughs> interior design. It's proper. Um, what's another fact? I'm horrible at maths. I don't enjoy like maths at all. Um, my middle name is Chinedu. Not a lot of people know that. Chinedu, which is Nigerian, which means God leads. Yeah. Um, mm, interesting. What else? Gun FIFA player, I reckon top five in the cricket in South Africa. <laughs> so bad. What do you mean? And I haven't even played for like <laughs> no, no. the last two years. Listen, <laughs> listen wait, I want to ask up. a question. Just line them me, up. Wait, wait, I'll tell you. You were on tour with the guy. Do you yeah. guys take your PlayStation? Guys on take their pogers and yeah. sometimes take their PlayStation. Yeah. I stopped so playing my PlayStation play now. Do you play Sen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got Sen covered. He knows. Oh, you got Sen covered. Yeah, look at your face. You're shocked. You're like, oh, no, I'm not shocked. No, 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 no. Sen, Sen, Sen is good. Sen but knows I'm saying in I got him covered. He was, I think he was third. Because yeah. as Dolphins, we have like a... A little ranking system. Yeah, ranking nah, system. Sen, covered. He knows. He, and he, oh, and but Sen he still was plays pretty good. Slow. Yeah, he's a very good player. And he also plays like league and stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's quality, but... But not in your league. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. I don't feel like I believe you. Yeah, eh? I promise you. You can ask him. You can get to no. the podcast and okay. ask him. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, ask him. I'll ask him, yeah. Yeah, so I'd say FIFA, I'm good. I don't like shooter games. Um, I enjoy collecting a few sneakers here and yeah, there when I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I love traveling. I really, really love traveling. That's probably my... So where about have you been and what was the experiences for you? I just think when you travel, you just get to like immerse yourself in like different cultures and see things completely differently, like different customs, different habits. Um, I was now recently in Istanbul in Turkey. That was cool. Went there for like two weeks. Um, awesome city, awesome people. Food was unbelievable because I mean they don't have a lot of preservatives in their food, so the stuff is fresh, 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 yeah, fresh. Yeah, so yeah. it's unbelievable. And like trying different dishes and yeah, just like I mean you go eat at dinner at like ten. Like it's completely yeah. different lifestyle. Yeah, that's true. And that's true. Different coffees, teas, breakfasts. I enjoy. I enjoy. I really enjoy traveling. I even like to Sri Lanka when you go on tour. You're having an opportunity to get outside of the hotel, see different things, getting a tuk tuk. You know, small things. Negotiate with the tuk tuk drivers. And, yeah, and yeah. In yeah. Turkey, everything you negotiate, everything, bro. Like everything. <laughs> I mean, okay. Besides, if you had to buy a coffee in Starbucks, if it's thirty rand, it's thirty rand. Yeah, but I hear you. I hear you. Everything else, taxi, this, negotiating, all these kind of skills. I enjoy traveling. Yeah, a lot. And then learn language barrier. You you adapted or did you like just? Oh, but people always say that I'm like put on an accent when <laughs> when there's a language barrier I try to speak in their accent with the broken English and it's I don't know why it's such a bad habit as well I don't know what I was doing there uh, but it's a bad habit um, but yeah you know what like nowadays I mean you can get into a cab in Turkey and the Oak can't speak any English um, and then he puts like his Google Translate yes, there yes, yes 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 so like there's a lot of things around it nowadays that just makes it yeah, so makes easy it makes it so much easier um, a lot of the time, though, I'll say this, they like to pretend they can't speak, especially like if you're going to go shopping and clothing or bartering and stuff, pretend they can't speak English because then you might speak to your mate or whoever you're with and say, oh, this is too expensive or we can get it for 500 rand or whatever. We can. Yeah, yeah. But they can speak English. They can. They're just, so, yeah, just getting... It's just a way of uh, them maintaining a, something over you because if you don't know someone speaks English, then you can you can chat, wow, whatever. Yeah. But then they, they can turn around and speak English to you, shocked. So, Yeah. It's just learning all those like little yeah. tricks and those yeah. little experiences. That's pretty dope, eh? So traveling the world in terms of um, cricket and stuff, the opportunity to travel the yeah, world. Yeah, I think it's gun, bro. I mean, we we under nineteen, we'd gone to Bangladesh, somewhere you'd never take yourself just yeah. on your own accord. We'd gone to Dubai for like a pre-camp. Uh, you know, I've gone to England, obviously, play a bit of club cricket. I was in Holland to play a bit of club cricket, and then when you're in those places you travel around meet people experience stuff so cricket is you're lucky in the sense that you it does give you an opportunity to travel when you can i mean sri lanka the red bull we went to uh, gaul it's a beautiful place i'd go there again on holiday yeah. so yeah i think with cricket I, you know i think good cricketers travel well because ultimately if you want to play for south africa you're going to be you're going to go on a tour to australia you're going to go tour to Bangladesh. Yeah, India, yeah. are you able to you know get comfortable in these different countries and be there for a while because sometimes it's not actually that you're not a good cricketer it's just that you don't travel well like you, yeah. you struggle away from home you yeah. struggle with the food you struggle with the language barrier you like get angry you just, so i think you've got to travel well as a cricketer because otherwise you're not going to enjoy that part of your job yeah no that's proper and then any other sports that like you into away from football, cricket football football i'm chelsea fan massive chelsea fan no bro. my man no, and, and, no. We, and we're coming for no. it all boys no Todd listen, Bowley listen. and the mana we're coming for it all money solves listen. everything no don't you disappoint me chelsea who do you support man united yeah but that's tough no it is tough no, but united's we, tough no it's, and right. it's only in the last two years where you Oaks have 
started chatting normal because before you guys were brazen talking about Alex Ferguson and yeah, history yeah, lessons. Yeah, yeah. So like in the last couple of years, you guys have humbled yourself and realized, okay, you need to start chatting normal. Yeah, it's true. It's and, true. And it's true. But Chelsea, Chelsea, tell me about Chelsea. No, we we don't have to chat normal because Lampard, your hero. Hmm? I'd say off the field. <laughs> Like Lampard. as not a manager, sure, but legend. <laughs> but as a manager, disgusting, <laughs> disgusting. I, it, it, we, Chelsea would have been better served if they put me and Vandia as manager and and, and uh, assistant manager. We've done better than Lampard. Shocking. He's disgusting. Th- that's, why, that's why I'm disappointed. I don't know how he keeps getting jobs though. Like who's coaching Chelsea now? Now we've got Pochettino, bro. We, oh, we're coming for okay. a call. Or we might just come. Do you feel? In. Do you feel um, the foreigners that come into the Premier League do better, or what's your take? I don't what know, do you I think? think? It depends. I think the Portuguese guys come in and they do well. The Portuguese guys do well because I think the, Sp- the Portuguese league is like quite physical. Yeah. The Spanish league is a bit slower. The guys struggle for a bit. The German league, I don't believe, is gone because any time a club signs a German guy, I mean, we had Werner, we had Havertz. Those yeah. looks are disgusting. Yeah. I'm hoping Nkunku doesn't have that German tax on him because he smashed it for Leipzig. So I'm hoping that he's Yeah, let's hope let's hope you guys have a better season this coming season. You getting rowdy, you won what? Cup, what Cabra Cup? What did you guys win? Listen, we won something. You didn't win this anything. This is our first year we haven't won something. <laughs> In like the last eight, nine years or something ridiculous. We're used to winning. That's why people are so happy for us to be in a dark space. Look, but I just feel like no, for long we no can one, always just have something. You didn't no have a bad talks season about Chelsea. Boom, Nobody Champions League. talks about Chelsea. And that's okay. It's fine. It's anyway, fine. Premier League, tell us Spanish League. Real Madrid or Barcelona? Uh, which one? If I had to choose, I'd choose Madrid. Okay, okay. If you have to choose Messi or Ronaldo, I'm choosing Ronaldo. Okay. I like Ronaldo. Gonna, Ronaldo. I'm choosing Ronaldo. Over Messi. Yeah, yeah. It's more what? Thing. I prefer. I, just, no, I resonate with Ronaldo, dude. He's just like a hard worker. He's the best in the world. Obviously, Messi, I think, is probably more talented. But Ronaldo's literally worked himself to be the best in the world. So yeah. I, I respect that more. Can I say? I'm, I resonate with it more. So World Cup, nothing means nothing to you. No, but I mean. You, in that team, in his Argentinian side, yes. is a good side. For for Portugal to win the Euros with that side. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Who scored the winning? Eder. His name was Eder. Have you ever heard of that guy? <laughs> no. Exactly, <laughs> black. Ronaldo was playing with guys that we don't know. On FIFA, yeah. they don't have pictures. They Dude. literally don't have pictures and he won. Come on, bro. That guy's different gravy. You know that if you're in a final, who would you want? Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. <laughs> No way, bro. In a final listen, clutch moment, listen, listen. Ronaldo Messi. can carry the listen, team. I used to, I used to like, I like both guys, yeah. but I used to, as soon as, when Messi did what he did this last World Cup, I then said, I made But it peace. was rigged for them, bro. They always were getting penalties every other game, Argentina. There was a whole bump for Messi, this thing. Bro. Yeah, yeah. But it, it was good. It no, was I'm good. happy for him, bro. He's yeah, cool and stuff, but CR7's my guy. Uh, F1, Hamilton. Yes, 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 yes. I, like I was going to ask you that. And then, and then... Um, Tennis, Federer. Federer. And then basketball, who's your guy? I don't, I'm not a big basketball fan, but yeah. my brother's a basketball fan, but uh, I'm, not a big, I'm not a big basketball fan. If I had to choose someone, I would have chosen Ja Morant, because I yeah. thought he was sick. Yeah, but now yeah. I see he does the guns and videos, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> listen, I'm listen, not a gangster, no, I don't resonate with so this funny, talk. You like, know I listen Ja. listen to hip-hop music, but... Yeah, yeah, listen, your hairstyle and everything is yeah, Ja Because <laughs> uh, what's his name is a big basketball guy, Nandre. So then yeah, he was yeah. like, yeah, Ja Morant looks like you. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you yeah. guys are like... And I was like, now I see he does the heavy <laughs> Pulls stuff. Out and <laughs> I'm not a road man, so... Lots on Tony, before we bounce. Um, boxing. Oh, I, I quite boxing. Yeah, that's my last one. Boxing. I'm a big follower of boxing. I enjoy yeah, boxing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I enjoyed Javante or Javante Davis. Yeah, Javante Tank. Tank. Um, I did also enjoy Ryan Garcia, bro. I think it, I think that that fight could have happened a bit later for you. You know, bro. you know, with that, uh, Tony, I'm a massive. I love like Canelo fan. as well. Yeah, so Canelo is fighting uh, Charlo. Yeah, yeah, and then but the biggest one for me is Errol Spence versus Craw- Crawford. That's happening soon. Yeah, I think that's going to be big. I don't know who's going to win. Um, and I think Tyson's running away from Usyk a bit. You think so? I think so, bro. I listened to a podcast and he Usyk, says he wants to, no. Yeah. He says he says he's he coming says back. That, but like, I, I think I think Usyk is dangerous, man. Because he's you know he's he's a bit smaller than I think he's quicker, yeah. and that's and that's Fury's thing is that he's quicker than most heavyweights. Yeah, yeah I'm true. Of, I'm like really pleased and happy with this one. It's the first time I'm doing one out at restaurants. You know, I'm trying to be a cool guy for Tony, but oh, whatever. I said the sauce there, so bad. <laughs> yeah, I thought the sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, man, it was good um, chopping it up, uh, having a cup of coffee, um, sure sharing does. thoughts, and thanks so much for making the time, bro. Oh, thanks for having me. Dudes. All the best, eh? Going Thank forward, you. please uh, represent us well and uh, win us the World Cup. <laughs> if I'm there, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Tony. Thanks, brother. Thanks, bud. Cool.